Welcome back to Cryptos Are Us. I am George. We're all George. So happy Friday. Today, let's talk about the greatest wealth transfer in Bitcoin's history. And I think you guys know what I'm talking about, but it is happening right in front of our eyes. So this is important. So let's talk about this. Let's talk a little bit about crypto overall. And I found something very, very, very interesting about one of the hottest meme coins there is right now. So let's do this. Welcome, 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 guys. Bitcoin this morning fell a little bit. Now we're retesting that pesky 63.7 resistance slash support. Let's see if we can bounce right off of there. But overall, we've been going, yeah, sideways. We've been going sideways for a while. And we go through these periods all the time where we have dips and then we go sideways. We consolidate and then we get ready for the next leg up. It happens all the time. But while this is happening, though, we do have one of the greatest wealth transfers in history. And what am I talking about? Well, we had eight hundred and thirty six million dollars outflow this week. You guys know who that's from, right? From Grayscale. Uh, and that's because they keep on selling. They've been selling like crazy. They've been selling for the past two months, basically. Now they have sold over $12 billion worth of Bitcoin. Grayscale used to be used to hold the largest amount of Bitcoin of any entity outside of Satoshi. Now their, their supply is dwindling, right? And this week they sold close to a billion and of, of course they're still today. So it could add up to a billion outflow, which is absolutely insane if you think about it, right? And we've been talking about this for quite some time. And people are speculating that what's happening now is more related to the bankruptcies of DCG and Genesis. Maybe early on, a lot of the outflows were simply people that want to cash out, but now, I mean, we're seeing massive amount of outflows every single day, right? And we know that the parent company, DCG, is in trouble, needs at least $3 billion. And then Genesis, who went bankrupt, needed $1.6 billion. So it could be related to that, what we're seeing right now. So people are speculating that maybe this will be over soon because those will be replenished, right? But, you know... That's why I used I used Larry Fink's uh, picture on the thumbnail because while this is happening, you know, guess who's buying? Even though there are, are are other ETFs and they've been trying to do their best, most of them can't compare to BlackRock, right? BlackRock had a pretty good day inflow of 233 million. Let's see what happens today. But they had some absolutely monster buys. This past two months right while grayscale is selling so we are seeing the greatest wealth transfer of bitcoin's history from an entity that had six hundred fifty thousand bitcoin to now 300 something thousand bitcoin and if they're still selling at this pace pretty soon they're gonna lose that 300 300 billion dollars uh worth of bitcoin or no is it billion no um, three, 300,000 Bitcoin will be flowing into BlackRock, right? That's, that's the reality situation. It's, if you, if you think about it, it's just a really bad all around scenario, right? Larry Fink and BlackRock, even though short term, we talked about how, yeah, they're buying everything up is driving prices up. But like, think about how bad that is long term when BlackRock controls the fund that has, 650,000 Bitcoin or a million Bitcoin or eventually 5 million Bitcoin or something like that. It would be outrageous for one company to hold so much. And we know what BlackRock is all about. And, you know, it's not just BlackRock. There are others that are buying up like crazy. Maybe not on the same scale. But, you know, there's someone new in town called Mr. 100 
who has accumulated $3.5 billion worth of Bitcoin since November. So within a short amount of time, okay, uh, he purchased 900 Bitcoins yesterday, which means he purchased basically the entire amount that was <laughs> released yesterday. There's only 900 being released per day right now. In about a month, less than a month, when we had a halving event, it'll be 450 per day. But basically, this guy is buying as much as being released per day. Okay, so think about it. This is just one single individual. How many other individuals are there like this? And this is not even counting the institutions that are buying the ETFs too. So we're seeing massive, massive amount of wealth being transferred from retail to large whales and institutions. Here's another example of that. Short-term holders and loss to exchanges, okay? You may notice that, yeah, we haven't seen this kind of spike. I mean, going all the way back to 2021. Even when Bitcoin was selling off from its last top, okay, you see a lot of those those spikes, we have never, ever, ever seen <laughs> transfers like this where short-term holders are sending their Bitcoin to exchanges. And not only that, selling them at a loss, not even for a profit. This is what you call lettuce hands. People that have come in recently and they're selling like crazy because they don't quite understand Maybe they, this is their first cycle. Maybe they, they just came in a month ago when Bitcoin hit 73,000, I don't know, or, or above. I mean, 73,000 was just two weeks ago. It wasn't even a month ago. But there's a massive amount of exodus from retail investors, and what they're doing is selling to Mr. 100s and to the institutions. That's just, it's just horrible to think about. It's really horrible to think about. Like, this is just now. This is just like two, three months. No, two months after ETF introduction. What is it going to be like at the end of this cycle? And what is it going to be like during the next cycle? You know, think about it. During the next cycle, when ETFs control, let's say, knock on wood, hopefully this doesn't happen, 15, 20% of the supply. What is going to happen then, right? Then is Bitcoin really decentralized then when such little entities hold so much? And this includes Michael Saylor too, MicroStrategy. We all love MicroStrategy. We all think Michael Saylor is Bitcoin Jesus. But let's not forget, he himself holds over 200,000 Bitcoin already. Uh, he owns more than 1% of the total supply, Right? So these guys are buying and buying and buying, which is fine. But the problem is the lettuce hands, the retail investors are selling to them. Basically, in the future, you're going to have very, very, very little actual people that hold Bitcoin if they keep selling to the big boys, right? So that's going to be unfortunate. And what's more unfortunate <laughs> is that these lettuce hands... Not diamond hand, lettuce hands. The retail that sell will kick themselves because they don't realize what's coming up. And that is the parabolic bull cycle, right? The parabolic bull stage, I should say. That's when things get really crazy. And unfortunately, when they sell, they're going to have to buy back at a higher price and end up with less Bitcoin, right? No one wants that. No one wants to see that. That would be absolutely horrible. Anyway, so just want to start out with that, okay? There's just an enormous amount of wealth transfer happening right now. And it shouldn't be happening right now. I can understand when we're back in 30 or 40K, I can understand how maybe a lot of people couldn't take it and decide to sell. But certainly not above 60,000. Certainly not when we're just weeks away from all-time high, right? This will be a horrible time to sell at a loss. Keep in mind, what I showed you was people selling at a loss. Not just selling for profit, selling at a loss, right? This will be the, the absolute worst time to be doing so. 
yeah, that, that's really it. I've shown so many metrics, fundamentals. We're getting rate cuts coming up. You know, that was just announced. There's so many. Having an event in less than a month. We got so many catalysts right around the corner. You know, yeah, seriously, like having an event is, is less than a month away. I think people have forgotten about that. <laughs> that is the most bullish catalyst that we have every single cycle. Don't fall for the FUD. Don't fall for the FUD, guys. I know you guys are regulars. You guys have been watching me for a long time. Most of you guys don't fall for it, but there will always be people that fall for it, and that's going to suck. Well, on to better news. Uh, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong foresees that, you know what? In the future, we're going to have a Coinbase 500. That's, that's a little, you know pretentious to to call it a coinbase 500 similar to s p 500 but what he means is basically as crypto adoption goes upwards people will view the top 500 crypto projects just like they view the top 500 companies in the s p 500 kind of like what i do on cmc i go down the list and the top 100 projects kind of tell you my thoughts about them if i like them if i don't I mean, that is reality. In the future, as crypto gets bigger and bigger and bigger and more widely adopted, people will see it the same way. I don't know if they're going to see it as the Coinbase 500. They're going to, say, they're going to see it as just overall market cap, the, the top 500 crypto projects, you know, sorted by market cap. Um, but, you know, I, I do believe this is going to happen. I think for us in the crypto space, we're already doing that. But people outside the crypto space, not so much, right? So I think eventually there will be indexes made. Uh, even, you know, maybe it, it can be. You know, we have like NASDAQ, S&P, Dow Jones, right? Maybe we will have a company. Maybe Coinbase will have something like the Coinbase Index, you know, or something like that. I don't know. But I do think this is going to happen in the future. This is definitely going to happen in the future. And speaking of the alts, what's going on with them? Well, a lot of people are wondering when altcoin season is going to happen. Traditionally speaking, altcoin season never really happens until the final year of a four-year run. Okay, never. Even though alts seem like at least a few seem like they have been doing very, very well. Right now, a lot of alts are still 60, 70, 80% down. Some are even 90% down, right? That's actually normal. Back in 2021, okay? Let's just go back, back to 2020, after the last halving event. If you look at the alts and how much they're away from their previous high, they were all like 95% away. They really didn't start catching up until like mid second half of 2021. And then they exploded at the end of 2021. That's how it works. It's the same thing before. It's always like that. It's usually the second half of the last year. And then the last month and a half or two, that's when things get really explosive. But this cycle has been a lot stronger. Alts have been a lot stronger. That's why Bitcoin dominance didn't go up to like 70, 70 percent like before, right? Um, so a lot of people are wondering if it's going to happen. So we're already ahead of the game. We could certainly see more because we do have more usage with crypto overall with a lot of these alt projects, right? So you know what? As we pass the halving event and as we move further, into this year, we could definitely see more resurgence from the alts, right? And I've been talking a lot about memes and how they've been driving a lot of the chains and so forth, right? But it's not just memes. There are a lot of things that's going on. AI is definitely a big narrative. AI is actually doing a lot for, for the space, right? Uh, people have asked me about this project, AIOZ, I don't even know if you say AIOZ or something like that, AIOZ. But they're one of the companies that have been doing very well. Fetch AI has been doing very well. Singularity has been doing well. Render has been doing well. BitTensor has been doing well. You know, AI narrative is huge. And I think that is also driving a lot of these projects to new heights. 
and some of them have broken through their previous highs already, right? So AI Oz partners with Alibaba to boost AI storage and streaming services. That's actually, that's fantastic. And I kind of looked them up. They, they used to be like a decentralized CDN, which they still are, but now they're more focused on storage. So that kind of a new thing. And they have AI integrated because the AI is supposed to be make, make everything more efficient. So, um, so yeah, that's one example that, you know, there, there are more things happening in this space besides just memes bring a whole bunch of volume and people, but the AI narrative is going to be very, very strong this year. So I'm going to be covering a lot more about AI. Um, outside of that, you know what? Phantom also, just to let you guys know, they've been the best performing non-meme coin for the last 30 days, which is actually quite surprising because I haven't been following Phantom that much, but their performance is really good. So Phantom is going through a sonic upgrade, which basically just makes them a lot faster and more efficient. And we'll see what happens when it happens. <laughs> it's actually, the past 30 days have been kind of rough for a lot of projects. So it's actually quite quite impressive that they've done so well and not be a meme coin. And speaking of meme coins, I found something interesting yesterday that someone said, and I dismissed it, and I looked it up, so I got to apologize to that guy because that guy is right. Something very, very interesting about one particular meme coin and why it has done so well and probably why it will continue to do well. And it's not really a good thing, but it's very, it, it stands out. It stands out. Okay, so which one am I talking about? Well, first, let me go through a few of them. All right, so the biggest meme on on Solana is whiff right now, okay? At 2.2 billion. Uh, not having such a good day, but you know what? Who are the biggest holders, right? So if you look at whiff and you look at the top holders, no surprise, someone like Binance, okay? Controls 14% of supply. Now, not all of it belongs to the team. It's just people are trading on Binance, but still 14% lives on Binance. Right, and then you look at like number five, like only one percent lives on Kraken. Number eight, one percent lives on Gate, and the other ones I don't know if it's just individual holders, but they're not marked. But basically, you know, Binance holds fourteen percent, which is a large amount. But everything else is kind of distributed. No one really above any other significant percentage, right? And then you look at Bonk, for example, one point four billion, and you look at how they're distributed. Well, Binance only holds seven percent. Okay, and then you have Bybit holding 2%, and then another Binance 1%, Gate at 1%. I have no idea what this 12% is, okay? Uh, I don't know if that's a marketing address or something like that. But, you know, again, the exchanges hold a good amount, but not too much. Binance now holding only 7% versus 14% of WIF, right? And then you look at someone like the, the, one of the new players like Slurf. They've been dropping like a rock, but they, you know, they were at $500 million. So I was looking at them, you know, who, who owned the most. They're actually the most decentralized of all of them, surprisingly, because 18% of Slurf is locked into Radium, okay? And 12% is with Gate, no Binance. They have no Binance listing. So, okay. So that brings me to the one that I want to talk about, and that is Boom, Book of Meme, which is actually still up today. And it was at 1 billion not too long ago. Uh, remember how they got like the fastest Binance listing ever in history of any memes? So someone said this yesterday, so I decided to look it up. And they said, you know what? There's no way Book of Meme is going to go down because Binance holds 50% of it. And I'm like, that can't be right. That, that can't be right. <laughs> well, I looked at it. It is right. Not only that, <laughs> uh, several other exchanges hold an enormous amount. So look at that. Binance holds 50.21% of BOM. Now do you see why <laughs> they, they listed them so quickly? Gate holds 5.81%, Radium only 3.4%, Bybit 2%. So if you add that up, 
That's 60% of the supply right there. And everyone else is kind of distributed under 2%, right? So th this is highly suspicious that Binance holds 50% of the supply of BOM. <laughs> That's crazy. This has to be an insider meme. This has to be like one of the inside guys at Binance like, all right, let's release this and then list it. Or they know someone very close, high up in Binance and just said, you know what? We're going to give you 50% of the supply or something like that. Because that's absolutely insane. That's absolutely insane. Um, so that's really very interesting. Whoever brought it up, thank you. I apologize. I dismissed it yesterday. But, you know, what does that mean? That probably means that BOEM is not going to go anywhere. Because if this is Binance supported that heavily, they're making a killing from the trading fees. And they probably... A lot of this 50% probably belongs to Binance themselves. So that means they're going to make an absolute killing with this, which means they're probably not going to sell. They're going to probably go just pump this to the moon. So just to throw that out there. I think that's very interesting. All right. Let's do some Q&A. All right, unfortunately, not off to a good day so far. I think uh, there's a lot more grayscale selling once again. There's too much grayscale selling. It's so much that not even BlackRock can compensate and, and take all of it. So, man, can't wait until grayscale finally runs out. It's like at this point, they got 30 you know, 300,000 Bitcoin left. At this point, it's like, hey, just do an ODC sale, man. Just do an ODC sale to BlackRock. That probably would make it a lot easier. All right, scrolling down, scrolling down. Paulo asks, do you think Bonk still has a future? I mean, it's still holding above a billion, so yes. Yes, it does, but I don't know if you're asking if it's going to become the leader again once, it, you know, of, of memes. I don't think so, because they'd lost that to Whiff. Paul says, I go further than Coinbase 500, late 90s internet companies. Now all computers are internet computers. So crypto protocols, protocols. If you go way out, I could see that way, 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 way out in the future. But there are a lot of protocols that are non-crypto protocols, right? So I don't know if that's near future, maybe like 20, 30 years. If ETH, if SEC sues Ethereum crashes ETH, will Shiba Inu crash with Ethereum? Uh, not only will Shiba crash with Ethereum, every proof of stake project will probably become a little bit weaker because they're basically all proof of stake. Does this mean you're jumping into a bone? I'm unsure about that. Maybe. Maybe because I don't think Binance is gonna let it fall. Um, Sud Biz War, keep up the good work. I really enjoy your Bitcoin analysis. Love the tips community. You know, tips did really well this morning when I woke up. I saw it went up to like seven plus million. I think it's still holding there. Um, what's your opinion on keeping crypto on Robinhood? You know, my opinion is download the Robinhood wallet. They do have a wallet, okay, and store it in there rather than store it on Robinhood. Unless you're trading all the time, which is different, but you shouldn't be doing that anyways. So I would say at least download the Robinhood wallet 
So you could self custody your own crypto. Ski mask. What cars do you still have? The same. I have a Model S, Model X Plaid, my G Wagon, and my Ferrari. And they all fit in my garage. <laughs> um, can you talk about Base Network and Aerodrome? The chat wants to hear your thoughts. I I don't know why everyone, at least one person, asks about Aerodrome every single live stream. It's a fine project, the biggest decks on base, but I don't like base, so I don't cover it. That's it. I find base unappealing. I like the plaid, but I hate the plaid. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a very fast car, but the Falcon doors on the X really sucks in real life. It, it may look like it's cool, but it's very inconvenient. Um, Braxton, hey Jordan, when XRP is hitting new highs, are you going to rotate those profits into ETH at its lows while they are being investigated? Well, XRP is not going to be hitting new highs. I don't know where you're getting that from. <laughs> it's been six years. Are you going to wait another six years before it breaks through its previous high? It's going to happen sometime. I just don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Uh, Ian says, great time to be a Phantom bag holder, so cheap and fast. Uh, you know, Phantom has been. I mean, actually, I really mean this. They have staged a tremendous comeback. One that I did not think that would happen. I really didn't. Like, I, I thought it would be a, they would be lost in a sea of L2s and L1s. But they have staged a tremendous comeback. And even on a day like today when everything else is dumping, they're up 12%. Very, very impressive. Very impressive. Uh, Solana will have much more growth this cycle compared to ETH. I don't disagree there. Uh, how high would you expect AVAX to go? They're in the 50s. I, I expect at least 10x, 500. 500 plus. Uh, do an update on your Lego room. I didn't really, we didn't really build anything, so there's nothing really new about it. I did put in the, the Avengers Tower and re, redid my city a little bit, but that's about it. What do you think of the worldwide crypto Palestine on Solana? It sounds like a horrible project. <laughs> it sounds like a terrible name. So that's my thoughts. Uh, how do you feel about tongue coin? Is there any project catch your eye in that ecosystem? You know, the problem with tongue coin is, um, they're all projects for like telegram, not for like the chain itself. I've been approached by TongueCoin before, and they're all about promoting projects that are built in Telegram, like bots and so forth, which I have no interest in. It seems like they don't actually have a chain, and there's no like real dApps built. It's just all like stuff that's coming inside of Telegram. So that that's just not very appealing to me. Moses, uh, thank you. Do you think, why is Grayscale selling retail but BlackRock buys OTC? It's not that. It's just that at some point in time, they have to convert, right? And you know, remember I said, OTC market will dry up. So when there's like $400 million or $500 million being sold by grayscale when they finally recoup that because you know it, during the day i don't think they're doing it but um but they have to settle that sometime and if the otc market doesn't have enough buyers guess where it's coming from right i think we're seeing a lot of that 
we're seeing a lot of that. I don't think the OTC market can handle how much the ETFs are either buying or selling per day now. I noticed you have crypto scans for commercials on your videos. Anything you could do to have them removed to protect your community. There is absolutely zero things I could do about that. Ask Michael Saylor. There's a million fake AI Michael Saylor ads playing and there's nothing you could do. YouTube just has done an absolutely horrible job at, at allowing that to happen. Same thing with scam comments. You just can't fall for it. Do you think Kula will take off? I think so. You just have to be patient because it's on Polygon. You know, it, it's a monumental achievement already to make it, you know, get to 20 million and 40 million to hold that 20 million because Polygon stuff, uh, there's no memes that have anywhere close to the market cap of Kulo. And, you know, Moon Daddy's out there just pushing and pushing and pushing and Kulo swap should be out soon. <laughs> so whatever that comes out, that'll be a big thing big thing for Kulo. I can't say all the details, but there are big things coming for it. And it's not just for Polygon. Kulo Swap would be like a DEX aggregator, multi-chain DEX aggregator. Um... <laughs> Viper says, BDC already hit cycle top. It's over, guys. I can't tell if you're trolling, Viper. Hopefully you are. <laughs> yeah, those scam ads, man, with the fake sailor interviews. Um, you know, whenever I see it, you have to report it, but you can't report it on the video that you're trying to watch. You have to click into the link and then report it from that fake account. If you report it, Let's say you're pulling up my channel and you see it and you report it. You're actually reporting me. You're not reporting the fake ad. You have to actually go in the bottom left-hand corner, click into the ad, go to the YouTube page it's playing from, and then report that. But uh, they happen all the time. And then, you know, the scammers are really, they're really smart. They, they use bots and get like thousands of people to watch it to make you think it's real, but it's, it's not. You get just just don't fall for those scams, guys. No one will ever give you free crypto. All those ads, all they're saying, every single one tells you, go to my homepage, okay? And in the homepage, they'll say, send me some crypto and I'll send you back. I'm gonna airdrop some stuff for you. Send me some crypto so I know your address. No one will ever do that. <laughs> don't ever send anyone any crypto for any reasons. If, if you don't do that or connect your wallet, that's another thing they try to do. They, may, they say connect your wallet for the free airdrop. If you never connect your wallet anywhere you don't trust or send any crypto away, then you're fine. You're, you're not going to get scammed. But people get scammed for basically with those two uh, methods. Uh, your thoughts on DSO? Decentralized social. I'm not I'm not a fan of big I'm not a fan of social projects in crypto because none of them have proved that they can do anything. I remember when EOS made a big deal about their um, decentralized social project. When EOS was like top five project, they're all time high. They said they were gonna come out with some social network. It failed immediately. It's not easy to build a social network so until one that could prove it to me that it could be done i'm not investing in any of them who will be friendlier to crypto trump or biden i have no idea i don't think either one gonna be friendly they're just too old to understand Stan says, great time to get in Stanley Pub, expecting at least 100x from them, if not more. Well, they're still very, very, very low cap, so that definitely could happen. So 
So you're saying if SEC sues Ethereum, it'll also crash XRP. No, because XRP just went through the lawsuit. So they're not going to crash. But if an entire market crashes due to it, then they'll probably be pulled down with it. I think Vivek would have been the most bullish for crypto because he's young and he actually understands. Uh, for everyone else, I don't know. Hey, just because, hey, you, Trump minted NFTs. You know who else minted NFTs? Peter Schiff. You think Peter Schiff likes Bitcoin now? Just because you, you mint an NFT doesn't mean that, that you actually care about crypto. Uh, Otak, Otaku. Thank you. Thoughts on Fetch AI and Filecoin? You know what? Fetch AI is leading the way. They, they broke through their previous high and they keep on going. They're definitely leading the, the AI space. I, I take that back. They're not leading it, but they benefited the most by being in the AI space. Let's put it that way. Is boom too high to buy right now? I don't know. I mean, it was just like a billion yesterday. So it did definitely come down. But like I said, 50% of it sits in Binance. <laughs> That's just crazy. So they're probably not going to go anywhere. Roy, what about it? I hold my Kimball. That's about it. Uh, Brilliant Bing. 80-20 Bitcoin soul. All in. Thoughts? It, I, I don't dislike it. I think it could be a good combination. <laughs> I think it could be a really good combination. uh scott yes you should <laughs> you should <laughs> so people know uh besides coinbase and gemini what other exchanges are is reliable in the u.s texas i mean you could go with robin hood i guess um kraken is another one but they were very small so i kraken i think would be the third but then you know maybe you could throw robin hood in there Polygon's target by the end of 2024. <clears throat> Polygon. Um, yeah, 5 to $10 is certainly possible by the end of this year. I think that's certainly possible. Uh, Yasin, thank you. Catboy, it's a BMB meme. Okay, that's dead in the water because of that. If you go build a meme, you don't build it on BMB. Make sure you keep your seed phrase. I lost 90k worth on MetaMask. How did you lose your seed phrase, man? I think people, that's a, I'm sorry to hear that, but the most important lesson when it comes to any wallet. It's not the wallet itself. It's the seed phrase or the recovery phrase. Because without it, you cannot restore. Like even with hardware wallets, th this is the thing with hardware wallets. I think it's it gives people a face, fake perception of security. Like a ledger or treasure, for example. It has like a pin code on it, right? And it makes you feel like, okay, this is so secure. You know, I'm protected. But not really. If you lose your recovery phrase, people can recover it. And then that security device means nothing. 
Same thing with mobile wallets, same thing with browser wallets. You have to protect your recovery phrase. That's the most important thing when it comes to a wallet. Matthew says FTT will make a comeback. It's a meme token now. I don't know about that. If black round grayscale buy via OTC, how does it affect price? Because the OTC market can't handle their buys and sells. Trump invested about $2 million into Ethereum. I did not know that. I'm going to have to look into that. Thoughts on ICP AI video is trending on Twitter since yesterday. No thoughts. <laughs> I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. I was on Twitter yesterday. I didn't see it trending on Twitter. I have no idea what you're talking about. Can Ethereum defeat the SEC? Yes. Yes, it can. It may take years, but they can do it. And there's no guarantee that they're going to get sued. You know, we'll see. If they, did, if they do get sued, you know what's going to be? Like, it's going to be the last week of Gary. When Gary leaves office, the last week he may just initiate it because he doesn't want to deal with it. Just like Jay Clayton did that with XRP. Banks partner with MetaMask for CL card. What's your opinion of this? I don't really care for any of those cards. Those debit cards, crypto cards, or whatever. I'd never use them anyways. I've held Cardano for a long time and it's been a project that's been very frustrating project to hold. What do you think that the biggest problem is? Um, there are a lot of problems. Cardano will never go away because of Charles. Unless if he ever leaves the project, if he declares like IOHK is no longer part of Cardano, that Cardano is going to crash to like zero. Uh, it's kind of like Tesla. Like the only reason why Tesla is doing so well is because of Elon It's the same with Cardano. Um, you know, from I'm not a developer, but from the developers I have talked to, they said Haskell is a dying language. It's really hard to program and not many people know about it. So the new generation, when they're coming out, they're not learning Haskell. So that is a big problem to entice developers to come aboard. Uh, number two is, you know, so Cardano is slow, too. It's not fast. If you use MinSwap, it's painfully slow. You know, so they're a little bit faster than Ethereum, but they're not much faster. So they're trying to figure out Hydra and, you know, side chains and making things faster that way. But, you know, they're not there yet. And, uh, you know, there's not a lot of stuff going on. They don't have their TVL is growing like 400 million, but it's not in the billions like the other popular chains. So there's a lot of little stuff like that. I don't know about little stuff. But there's a lot of stuff. But Charles, if he can make his vision happen, Cardano will be the most decentralized chain in history. But the problem is, do people really care about that? Uh, what are your thoughts on Aegis AI? I don't know of this project. Uh, they pumped recently. Fairly new. Okay, this is a project, not a game. <laughs> okay, that that splash screen completely turned me off. Um, you know, this is this, this is supposed to be a serious project. Okay, not not a game. They're coming out with AI tools. Uh, DAP demo, so they're not done. This is a hard project to take serious. This 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 whole this whole web page looks like a game too. Um, I guess it's too early. 
but hopefully they change that. I lost, James says, I lost 1200 on a block buy phishing scam last night. I had Recover BDC two weeks ago. I assumed it was a legit email. Be careful of what sites you plug your wallets. Again, I'm sorry to hear that. The two ways that people lose money, number one, you connect your wallet and sign something that you don't understand. And two, you send your crypto to some address. If you don't do any of those things, you'll never get scammed. So when, when people, when you get an email saying, yeah, you need to connect your wallet now to upgrade, or you need to connect to get your funds back, or you need to connect to get an airdrop, 100% of the time, it's a scam. Don't do it. Don't do it. If BlockFi or Celsius or Voyager are paying you back, they're not going to ask you to connect your wallet. They will just send you fiat. They're not going to ask you to connect your wallet. They're just not. So don't connect your wallet for any means other than to trade on a DEX that you know is 100% legit. What's the chance that Grayscale and BlackRock are in cahoots to suppress Bitcoin's price? I don't know if there's like official, you know, cahoots, but maybe uh you know larry fink and michael they have a side conversation going i don't know i i think blackrock is is a major shareholder of grayscale and maybe blackrock lost a lot of money on dcg or genesis maybe they were like affected by dcg and this is their way to to make it up by converting all this bitcoin and bring it over to blackrock i don't know maybe there's like a like a side discussion or something like that more devs moving to stacks stacks have been absolutely killing it too they broke through their previous high there are a lot of I get pitched all the time. I get pitched so many Bitcoin BRC20 projects now. They're, it's like the new boom. It's like when Ethereum was getting hot and everyone's just trying to develop on Ethereum. And you know, most of it won't survive, but there are so many ERC, BRC20 projects coming out. So, so many. I don't know how they will do. Because not even all the Bitcoin maxis like BRC20, right? There's like a, a disagreement. So I don't know. But I do know Stacks is benefiting a lot from it. Ando. Ando is a banker's coin. I don't like it. But I re recognize it has been doing well. But it's all about tokenizing like treasury bills and dollars and just not my thing at all Man, today, what a day to Friday. Grayscale must be selling like crazily today. Maybe maybe this is the last week. Maybe this is the last day, I, I should say. We already had 800 plus million outflow. Today will probably make it a billion. Man, not even BlackRock can make up for it right now. I mean, it's just absolutely insane how much is being sold. But you know what? Don't be one of those guys like I showed that is massively panic selling to BlackRock and the institutions. You're going, you're going to regret it. When things come down, great time to DCA. It's like buying on, you know, 
on a on a discount on a sale right but you do, definitely don't want to join these guys these massive spikes <laughs> of short-term holders selling a loss to the big boys that are buying. Prices before having day. You know what? I'm still very bullish. We got less than a month. We could certainly turn back up to 73,000 beyond before having. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. We were just flipped. We just flipped to 68,000 like a day ago, right? So the market can move really quickly back up. So going up to the halving event, we could still be at like eighty, ninety thousand dollars by the halving event. I know today makes it seem like ah, what are you talking about? It's not going to happen. But you guys know, Bitcoin has been very volatile recently. If Grayscale say today is the last day Grayscale sells, and next week it's all plus billion inflows, by the time we get to to having event, we could be at eighty thousand dollars. We'll see. We'll see. Flash Gordon says, "Wow, min swap just sucks. <laughs> it's just slow. You know, when I was buying snack on min swap, it's like." It's just really slow. And it doesn't look as pretty as some of the other DEXs, but the, you know that could be fixed. But the speed issue is just it's just slow. After you make a transaction, you're like, where's my where's my coins? Like it takes like minutes before it shows up in your wallet. You almost seem like, oh, did I mess something up? Like once you make a trade, and you gotta like wait five minutes before it appears in your wallet. Do you see alt dipping back after the having? Yes. You know that that was why I was showing this dominance of alts. Actually, if you look at it, you know Bitcoin dominance have been holding hasn't been going higher. It's been holding like 50, you know, 50 something percent, right? So I think with the AI narrative, I think gaming will eventually take over. We haven't seen it yet. But AI is driving things. Memes are driving things. Um, and maybe games will later this year. But I think alts will definitely see a resurgence. I mean, there's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. This cycle is very different than previous cycles. Fire down below. Where can I send you Trump crypto link? You don't need to send. I'll, fi I'll, I'll find it. Thoughts on NIR and ICP? Uh, NIR, I like a lot better. I don't know about ICP though. SJ, they figured out how to suppress... Suppre suppress... The bull market. I don't know. I like to think that, you know, Grayscale and BlackRock are not in cahoots. I like to think that, that, you know, it's just Grayscale. But, you know, the further this goes, the more it seems like that's the case. Yesterday I had, uh, where's that thing that shows the cross? Uh, let me see. Yeah. I mean, it does. <laughs> If this doesn't make you think like something's going on between these two guys, I don't know what will. Is there exactly like an inverse relationship? So Grayscale probably sold. It's going to sell another like, I don't know, $400 million worth today. They're selling over 1% every single day now. Like 1%, 2%, 1.9%. 1.8%. They're, they're, they're increasing their sales. And it's, uh, it, like I said in the, the thumb, I mean, not the thumbnail, but in the title, this is the, the greatest wealth history transfer, the greatest transfer in Bitcoin's history ever. We've never seen this kind of transfer. And it's not just from Grayscale to BlackRock. It's also from 
a lot of the the lettuce uh, retail investors. Uh, thoughts on uh, Zai? You know what? I haven't heard much from Zai recently. The L3 on Arbitrum, all about gaming. Gaming have not been doing all that well. They're kind of holding. They're not doing bad, but they're not certainly leading like AI. Eventually when they do, Zai can blow up to be like the next beam. But right now, gaming is kind of stagnant. That's why Beam is also kind of stagnant. They have potential. Couple Wall Street analysts says Grayscale Alpha should be completed by next week. I hope so. I hope today is like kind of like ripping off the Band-Aid. They sell whatever they need to, and that's it. Um, Eric, uh, who's this guy? Uh, yeah, this Eric guy was like kind of... Uh, I think he's a lawyer. He he said the same thing. He's like this week's this week's selling is due to probably the bankruptcies. So that's why. Aesthetic Aesthetica. Followed by Elon has WIFS in his bio. What, I, I, what is that supposed to mean? A new meme coin coming out? Uh, George, swapping my snack back to Cardano. Red message wants me to accept price impact above 10%. Is this normal? No, it's not. I mean, just sell smaller amounts. You don't want price impact of 10%. That's like you're losing 10% just by trading it. Yeah, unfortunately, we didn't hold that at 63.7, but... You know, we've been through this. You can't say, oh, we haven't been through this. We were just at 60,700. And then we flipped right back to 68,000. And then now we're down here. I mean, all this is caused by grayscale selling. Okay. Massive grayscale selling causing retail to, to fall for the FUD. That's, that's quite simply it. You don't want to fall for the FUD. You don't want to sell off your Bitcoin or crypto to anyone, right? You want to keep it for yourself. But unfortunately, all this is grayscale. Just a BDC holder for life. Thank you. Wouldn't be surprised if later we're back to 68. It would not surprise me. Like we swing 5,000, 6,000, in this case 8,000, like it's nothing. That was within the same day, guys. This was at nighttime. This was in the morning. So basically one day that swung $8,000. So... That's why I say, by having an event, we could be at $80,000. It may seem silly now because it's dropping, but you know what? By, by Sunday, we could be back up to $72,000. And then, you know, people have forgotten about it, and then we're on our way to $80,000. So, just don't fall for this. We know, I mean, having events, come on. Having events coming in one month. We got three rate cuts in the U.S. that's already announced by Powell. Those are all tremendous, tremendous drivers. Um, and these ETFs like BlackRock, they continue to buy. They're not going to stop. All right, guys. So to conclude, like I've been saying, the greatest wealth transfer in Bitcoin's history is happening right now in front of our eyes. And that is not good. That is not good. 
you don't want to you don't want to contribute to this okay there's one entity that's buying a lot and you know there's a lot of whales too like mr 100 that's buying 900 bitcoins per day don't sell to these guys they're professionals they're pros they know what they're doing that's why they're <laughs> they're buying up you got to follow these guys you want to be a pro you want to act like a pro not like a lettuce hand that's actually selling to these guys okay so stay strong my friends Hey, if you wanted more content, go to Cryptos R Us Plus tonight. There will be a brand new series created by some of my guys on my team here. We'll see what they do, but make sure you subscribe. Make sure you go to Cryptos R Us Plus and subscribe, and then you'll get to watch them. It should come out tonight. It'll be like 6 or 7 p.m. tonight. All right. So... Smash it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.